Welcome back. In this video I'm going to be talking to you about the Kinemax equations with constant acceleration. And this is kind of like a basic core principle of physics uh, and we use these Kinemax equations all year. And we're going to make an assumption when we use these equations. We're going to assume that we're dealing with a constant acceleration. So I'm going to begin by talking to you about the four basic equations that you need to know. Uh, so the first one, I'm going to list them out, one through four, and I'm going to explain to you how you're going to go about solving these, okay? And I'm going to start with from the, the simplest to the most complex, okay? So the first equation here that we're going to deal with is dealing with displacement. Displacement is delta x, okay? Delta x equals v initial. When I say v, v initial, I mean vo plus v over 2 times time. That's the first equation we're going to talk about. Okay? And that's going to give you the displacement when you know the initial and final velocities and time. The second equation is dealing with V final equals V initial plus acceleration times time. Okay, that's the second one. And we got to keep moving through these because there's actually going to be four, uh, four important ones. So the third one here is going to be this. Let me see if I can view and zoom in a little more. Let me go to 200. That's better for my writing pad here. Um, the, the third one's going to be delta x, which is displacement, again, is going to be V0t plus one half a t squared and a is acceleration again and t is time and then our fourth equation down here is going to be v squared or v final squared equals v initial squared plus two a delta x. So these four equations are the keys, uh, the key kinematic equations when we have a constant acceleration. Okay, and when we're solving these, the way that I like to do this is I like to set up a table like this, okay, an xy table, and I'm gonna, we're going to write out all of our variables here. Okay, so I'm going to start here. So I have my x, my x components here and I have my y components here. And the reason I do a table like this is because if you're doing uh, projectiles, you're going to have an x and a y component going on at the same time. So the way I like to label the, the, the table, even if I'm just doing one dimension, is I like to write first acceleration in the x here. I like to write v initial here in the x, let's just say. I like to say v final. And again, all of these are just in the x. Okay. I like to say delta x like this, and I like to say time like this, okay? So these are all my variables. That's all that you can have, okay? And let me do the y in a different color just to, just to clarify here. So my y, let's make that green. So here's my y. So my acceleration in the y is here my v initial on the y is here my v final on the y is here my delta y is here that's my displacement and my time is here now one of the cool things about this table is that there's a definite link here in time they share the time always so this is always going to be shared between these two these are basically called parametric equations and, w and what that means is that even though they're independent, they still share time. They always share the time. So if you know the time of one, you can find the time of the other. So you can travel across here. Believe it or not, the most basic applications of these uh, problems are very simple. They're very simple. So what I want to do is I want to share with you how do you go about solving these. Well, here's how you do this. To begin solving any kinematics equation, all you need is three variables. Okay, let me say that again. To begin solving a kinematics equation, all you need is three variables. Okay, so for example, 
let's say that you had a car that starts from rest and accelerates for 10 seconds okay so let's say you have a car that starts from rest and let's say it's going in the x direction so uh, I'm going to use this this uh, side only so a car starts from rest so V initial in this case let me make sure I got the right color pen V initial is zero it starts from rest it accelerates for 10 seconds and I'm just going to give you I'm going to say it accelerates at a rate of 3 meters per second squared okay and I'm giving you all the correct units here I'm giving you meters per second squared I'm giving you seconds you know your problem you may have to adjust your units but right there I've given you three variables now that you have three variables you can solve for everything else and it's really that simple there's nothing that mysterious about it um, so let's just say I want to know how far did the car go I want to know the delta x of the car right okay well it started from rest it went for 10 seconds at an acceleration of positive 3 meters per second squared okay all right what equation would we use here if I want to find delta x well what variables do I have here I have acceleration I have velocity initial and I have time okay so let's take a look here this equation equation number three is the one I'm gonna use for this okay and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna start looking at my variables well when you're looking for an equation here's what I like to do okay a lot of teachers will have you write out like givens you know givens and what are you looking for and all this long the all of these tables and you start writing out all the variables and what are you looking for but you can really just do that with the equation okay so let's take a look at the equation here here's what I mean let's say I want to know given this information right I just gave you I want to know what's the displacement right what is that what's the displacement we're gonna look for that here right well I can use equation number three here and I'm looking for the displacement so here's what I do I circle what I'm looking for okay I circle what I'm looking for I'm looking for Delta X right I know V initial right I know time I know acceleration and I know time again here right so I check off what I know I circle what I don't know okay this is going to be a standard operating procedure throughout physics okay got it you got to do it because if you if you if I circled another variable in here I would know right away that I would need a second equation to solve that okay and that's a key that's a key thing because in physics you may have three equations three unknowns or four equations four unknowns so if I have equations and I'm circling all these variables and I don't know you know let's say I circled two variables here I would need another equation but I don't right I just have one equation right and I'm just looking for the displacement this is very straightforward right so I know these variables right here right so let's just take a look here well I know my V initial is zero right so that's zero so that whole term drops out right there right so my total displacement is really just going to reduce to Delta X is one half a T squared right so I'm gonna just write it up here pretty simple stuff here so Delta X is one half a is 3 right and T is 10 squared right so what does that give us well let's just do the math this is not that difficult right 10 squared is 100 times 3 is 300 divided by 2 is 150 so my displacement is 150 meters positive right wasn't that bad right so I just keep filling out the table it's like it's like you're doing like a it's like a cookbook almost you just kinda of filling in the table I don't even need to read honestly when you're doing these types of problems and it's a basic kinematics problem you don't you don't even need to read the word problem you don't even need to read it. You just go through and you look for the variables. You know, like you know, sometimes they'll give you this problem and it goes on forever explaining all these different things. What are you really doing? You're just trying to fill out your little your little checklist here. That's it, right? That's it. And so, what if I wanted to find v final? Well, now I have four variables, right? So I have four variables. So now I'm in the driver's seat. Okay. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that when I had three variables, I might be limited to the equations I can use. But when you have four variables, like this you can go back to the simplest equations up here so let's say I wanted to find out what is the final velocity because that's the only thing we don't know right we don't know the final velocity of the X right well let's just plug our variables in here okay I'm gonna go over here and running out of space here I'll write up here so V final X equals V initial which we know what's V initial X it's zero it started from rest right so V final is just acceleration times time right and the X so my acceleration is 3 and my time is 10 
So what's my V final? My V final is just 30 meters per second, right? Now notice I'm doing all of the, I'm doing all of this work without I'm not even really taking up that much space doing the calculations, right? Because we don't really need to. There's not you're just filling in the table, right? So now I'm at plus 30, right, meters per second. And this problem, if if this problem included a y dimension, right away we already have a clue now. It's like kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. I can come over here and I can say, oh, I got 10 seconds here because they share the time. And you're just kind of going through this process of just f uh, checking off. I know this. 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 This is shared with this. We know this. And then you could just kind of start f filling out the y's if you had the y's. Okay. Um, if it was a two-dimensional kinematics equation. This is just an example of kinematics equations in a very simple one-dimensional application. So I hope you enjoyed that video, and I'll talk to you soon.